Our Lady of Victory Catholic Church open house for prospective students third grade through eighth will be held on Tuesday, January the 14th to, at 6.30 p.m. in the OLB school gym. This is a wonderful opportunity for families to visit the classrooms and learn about OLB school has to offer. The Black Bag Collection is for the St. Vincent de Paul as we assist them in their service for the less fortunate in our community. Thank you for your generosity. As a kind reminder, we ask that you turn your cell phones to silent. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. The processional hymn is number 278, Baptized in Living Waters, number 278. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ had been baptized in the River Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son. Grant that your children, by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nation, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street, a bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Still, until he establishes justice in, on the earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea? beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me? Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, we hear of a dialogue of John the Baptist and Jesus, his cousin. A dialogue in which John the Baptist says, I need to be baptized by you. You don't need a baptism of repentance. And yet, what does Jesus say? Jesus says, yes, we're going to do it. Why? To fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill the will of the Father, to fulfill the will of what Jesus came for. The reason why we celebrated Christmas and the Nativity. Why? Jesus looks to another baptism, a baptism of blood in which he will shed upon the cross for each one of us to wash our sins clean when we are baptized at the baptismal font. And the water that Jesus went in was dirty. 2005, at the age of 19, I went with my mother when I was a religious brother to the Holy Land on pilgrimage with Father Mitch Pacwa. And we went to the River Jordan, and it was hot, and you could feel the sun like beating down on you. And when we got to the river, instead of being dry, it was humid, and it was dirty. And there were catfish swimming around in it, and I couldn't believe it. I thought they were only in Texas. And he told us, having read the scriptures of the baptism of Jesus, he said, you have permission, because we only have five minutes, you can take off your shoes, you can go in the water, do not drink the water. What do you think I did at age 19? I took off my shoes, I went into the water, and I drank it. And it was nasty. It tasted terrible. In fact, it almost kind of tasted like feet. The smell of feet, that's what it tasted like. And I couldn't get the taste out of my mouth. Gum, water, nothing, until we ate. And in that water, that same water, that all those people came from all over to have a baptism of repentance, and you can already see the dirt, the, grit, the, the sweat, and the grit being washed into that water and that symbolism of the sin. And in that water, Jesus chooses to be baptized in that dirty water. And not only that, but when Jesus goes into the water, goes into it, he rises. And what happens? Immediately, the heavens are opened. This image of in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve sin and they reject God by being selfish in their pride. And the garden is closed, and the angel stands there with a the flaming sword, and all is closed. At this moment, when Jesus enters into that water, it says the heavens are torn asunder. They're opened back up. And what happens? Two witnesses. First, the Spirit, in the form of a dove, comes and rests upon him. As Catholics, we believe that Jesus Christ is the God-man. At his birth, he is the God-man. We do not believe that at this moment when the dove came upon him, suddenly Jesus said, ah, I'm God. No. He was always God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And there's a witness of the dove upon him, and not just that, but it also shows that image of Noah when in the first flood, when humanity and its sin was almost completely destroyed, a dove was sent out and a dove came back with hope, that of the olive branch. 
So now another dove comes in which humanity, having been plunged through Jesus Christ into the waters, those dirty waters, comes back. And not just that, the second witness, that of the Father's voice. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved Son. And why is he well pleased? In a sense, God the Father is saying, this is my beloved Son, who is the Redeemer of the world, who will come in his mercy and sacrifice himself to redeem all of you. And not just that, not only is he my beloved Son, by the very actions of that and your baptism, you become a beloved daughter. You become a beloved son. And that reality of the gift of Christ for each one of us, we hold and believe in our baptism. At the cathedral here, we have a lot of baptisms, which shows that we are a vibrant, lively church. And not just the adults at the Easter Vigil, but oftentimes the children and at every baptism, I like to ask the question, okay, who here has been at a baptism in the past year? And usually only a few people raise their hands, unless it's a family full of a bunch of little kids, and they're like, yeah, I was there last month for my, my nephew and niece. And then I go through, what are we about to do? So that they don't think, well, as Catholics, they go in, they say a bunch of words, Father puts some oil on them, puts his hands on them, and then they pour water on them, and they're done. Suddenly they're saved. No, there's more than just the action. And so then I explained to them that image of the child coming in before Vatican II, how the child would be outside with the parents, the godparents, and they would knock on the door. And they would ask, who is it? And that image of what name do you give your child? What do you desire of your child? And then addressing the godparents, having addressed the parents, with a name and a purpose. They asked the godparents, are you willing to assist these parents in the raising of this child? And having affirmed, yes. Having acknowledged as godparents that not only will they assist the parents, they will assist the child, and when that child is old enough, that child may assist them in reverse, saying, just as the godparents told the parents and the child, you need to come to Mass, come to CCD. In the reverse, when that child is old enough, that child may tell that godparent, you need to come to Mass. You need to practice your faith. Because you stood before God and the community and that priest or deacon and said, I will assist this child by my witness and by my actions. And then having done that, there's a, we read the sacred scriptures, and then we call upon general intercessions asking God to assist this child, this family, this godparent, the community, in their worship. And then we call upon the angels and saints and ask them also to help us so that we may imitate them in seeking to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then after that, we have the prayer of exorcism, the expulsion of Satan, the casting out of the power of Satan. And in that prayer that we pray, there's the words, set free this child from original sin. Make him a temple of your glory. Send the Holy Spirit to dwell within him or her. That acknowledgement of once he is cast out, fill this child. Why? Because the child is a temple of God. And then after that prayer comes the anointing with the oil of catechumens, the oil of salvation leading up to the baptism itself. And in the early church, that, at that point, it would have stopped, and that catechumen would have continued to grow and to know and to understand the faith, and they would have stayed outside. In the back of the church, we have those glass walls there. They would have curtained them off, and they would have been had to leave because they were in the catechumenate. They were learning about the faith that those who had gone before had professed those in our own catechumenate who are here sitting, who are preparing themselves either for baptism, for their profession of faith, as they grow in knowledge of what we profess. And really sometimes we need to grow with them because we don't know our faith well enough. And then comes after the anointing with catechumenate oil, 
the laying on of hands, and the invocation of the deacon or the priest calling forth the Holy Spirit to fill this temple of the Lord. And then there's a procession, having processed from the back of the, from the church to the baptismal font. And at the font, there's the blessing of the water. And in the blessing of the water, there's an acknowledgement of salvation history from the beginning to the present. And the water is blessed with all present. Following that, the parents, the godparents, and the community make a profession of faith, a renunciation of sin, acknowledging that on behalf of this child, we profess our faith. On behalf of this child, we renounce sin. And those that say, well, we shouldn't do infant baptism. Well, if we go to scriptures, Jesus says two things. Well, one, go to all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And if we were faithful as Catholics, as Christians to that, guess what? All the adults are baptized. And then what do you do? You got to baptize the kids. And then in Acts, we have St. Paul who goes to jail and baptizes the entire household, not just the father or the mother. It says the entire household. So those, the master, the family, the slaves, the servants, all within the household receive the gift of God through baptism. And in that sense, having then at the baptism ourselves professed our faith, then we have the baptism where the water is poured upon the head of the child in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But it also includes the name of the child. First, middle, last. Calling to mind that we have dignity, then we're anointed with the oil of chrism, the one that smells really good, that you get, the priest gets on his hands at ordination, at confirmation it's placed upon the forehead, at baptism itself when we are anointed priest, prophet, and king, it's anointed on the top of the head, on the crown of our heads. And having been proclaimed priest, prophet, and king, having been washed all our sins, washed away, then anointed, then we're clothed with a white garment. That signal of our Christian dignity and we're told to keep it that way until we get to the kingdom. And in a sense, that garment that is placed upon the infant when we die, there is a white garment placed upon the casket. And we call to mind a remembrance that at our baptism, when we were placed with a white garment, we're called to live it throughout our lives so that it may be placed pure, spotless, and white. And if we get dirty, if we go off to the River Jordan and disobey what Father the church, our God has called us to do, we've got something called confession, where it can be purified and cleansed. And it requires humility, that same humility that Jesus shows to John the Baptist, so that righteousness may be fulfilled. And then comes the lighting of the candle from the Easter candle, that light of faith given to each one of us that we recall at the Easter vigil. And finally comes the prayer of the Ephatha, the breathing upon in which the ears and the mouth are prayed open. May our ears be open that we may hear the word of God and may our mouth be open that we may speak the word of God, that we may hear the good and speak the message and not fail. And then we move to the altar and at the altar we all proclaim the prayer that Jesus Christ has taught us, the Our Father. And then comes the blessing of the mother first, the father, and then the community. And we acknowledge as a family that this is the newest member of the church, that where we have been, that child is, and that that child will be where we now are. And so today, as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord, we recognize the gift of baptism, of our own baptism, not of a baptism of repentance, but of water and the Holy Spirit. We call to mind and we will ourselves make a renunciation of sin. We will also make a profession of faith. And then we will have the sprinkling rite. So those joining us by television will notice that we don't pray the creed at this Mass. Instead, we're going to make a renunciation of sin, a profession of our faith, and then I will go around and sprinkle everyone with holy water, recalling the gift of our own baptism. 
And so as we gather as a family, we acknowledge the love that God the Father has for us and those words that he said about Jesus, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. He wants those words to be addressed to each one of you now in your life. Because at our baptism, that is what he says. This is my beloved daughter who is spotless. This is my beloved son who has no sin, with whom I am well pleased. Would our candidates and catechumens please come forward? Dear candidates and catechumens, just as John the Baptist caught sight of Jesus coming towards him, may each of you be aware of the Lord as he approaches you throughout the week. Let him open your eyes to see just how you can heal the sick and the lonely, reach out to the poor, and challenge all forms of evil. Go now in the peace of Christ to reflect on the gift of the scriptures and break open the word in our own lives. Please stand. Dear brethren, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God and the holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Let us offer our prayers and our petitions to our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> For God's holy church, may she be a sign and instrument of God's love, faithfully sharing the mercy and compassion of the Christ in the world. We pray to the Lord. For our nation's civil servants, may they be faith-filled advocates seeking justice and care for the least among us, including unborn. We pray for the, to the Lord. For those who have become lukewarm in their faith, may the spirit giving their baptism rekindle faith and love in their hearts. We pray to the Lord. For our candidates and catechisms, may they recognize the Lord in the sick, the lonely, the poor and oppressed, and respond to them with the Lord's compassion and love. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed and for the repose of the soul of Otto Schultz and Raymond Winsky, for whom this mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have fallen away from the church. May they recall the gift of their baptism as sons and daughters of the Father as he longs them to return to an active, merciful ministry as sons of the Father and daughters. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we offer these prayers and petitions. We ask that you hear and answer them. Send the Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may be a fire to do your will through Christ our Lord. Amen. On Jordan's Bank, number 318.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, has we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was in it, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Brennan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only to say the word in my soul.
the communion hymn is number 227 hallelujah sing to jesus number 227 
Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just as a reminder, Our Lady of Victory School will have an open house this upcoming Tuesday, January 14th at 6.30 p.m. Please arrive at the gym. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. The recessional hymn is number 338. Come, Holy Ghost, number 338. 